Sana Tapadali Tuketi, Asanteni Sana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, Governors who are present here, led by the Chair of the Council of Governors, Madam Ann Waiguru, CS Aisha Jumwa, Principal Secretaries present here, and women leaders. Good morning. I'm Jambo. Um, it is a wonderful morning for us, and for me specifically, to be here this morning to participate in this very important event. Um, our nation's quest for prosperity has been hampered by fundamental inclusivity deficit, which is a consequence of chronic unresolved marginalization on regional, ethnic, socioeconomic, and gender basis. We have resolved as a people to implement a bottom-up economic transformation agenda not only to address these shortcomings, but also to build a nationwide, all of society, multidisciplinary, multi-sectoral, grassroots to capital coalition of Kenyans, of Kenyas, women and men, both young and old, and of all walks of life, to make up for lost time and to deliver shared prosperity within our generation. And that is why I purposely came for this event, because it speaks to the heart of what we need to do together as a people. Kenya has been making steady progress in many sectors for many decades now. However, the rate of progress has always remained behind the levels of poverty and inequality, making sustainable development and inclusive growth an elusive target for the majority. There are a number of underlying structural causes of this state of affairs. The least appreciated of these structural hindrances is almost the most obvious. As a nation, we do not have all hands on deck, and for six decades have locked a significant part of our population from contributing to and benefiting from economic growth and national development. As a result, the opportunities we have denied ourselves are vast. The cost of this persistent and systemic omission is huge, and the negative impact on the people, especially the most vulnerable, is immense. It is clear that a truly inclusive economy would be at least twice as productive, meaning that we would have exceeded our most ambitious development projections long time ago. We can accelerate our progress to become an industrialized, high-income economy by radically enhancing the inclusion and participation of women in leadership. And speaking about women and participation in our country, even when we speak even about politics alone, despite that we have few women elected, majority of voters in Kenya are women. So there is no doubt as to whether women participate in politics or not, because they do. But now it is time for us to move it a notch higher, that women should not only participate in terms of being voters, they should participate in terms of being candidates and in being elected as leaders. And it is not just politically correct to say we should have women leaders. It is the constitutional thing to do, and it is the moral imperative that we must aspire to achieve. And therefore, when I was requested by these great ladies to participate in this launch of G7, the great seven women governor leaders in Kenya, I thought it was a good place for me 
to come and ask us as a nation to recognize the participation of women. And none of us, no man, however prejudiced they are, did not come from a womb of a mother. We may be whatever we are, we may be strong, we may be opinionated, we may even have issues of prejudice, but the basic fact is that we were born by women. So just that recognition alone should give us the courage and the inspiration to support women in Kenya. And therefore, I have listened to um, the women leaders from my side of the political divide, and they have given an account and almost reduced this function to a function of UDA and Kenya Kwanzaa. But it is because they, they know that it takes courage, it takes a lot of support to get um, matters gender appreciated by our society now. But let me encourage you that um, what a women governors are doing they are doing more campaign than any campaign can be done. In the, jo in, the, in the good job they are doing in their counties, they are not only inspiring other women to be leaders, but they are making it easier for the country to elect women the next time round. So, Your Excellencies, governors who are women in our midst, you owe it to the women of Kenya to shine. Because in you shining, you encourage the country to vote for more women. And I am very proud of these women, great leaders. Anwa Iguru seated here. Uh, my dear sister Seth Barire, uh, who is here. Gladys Wanga, Susan Kehika, uh, Fatuma uh, Achani and Kawira Mwangaza, and of course, Wabinya Ndeti. These women, and allow me to say that, have demonstrated great integrity, understanding of what they need to do. And I have always gone out of my way to facilitate them, to support them whenever I can, and I want to promise that that is going to continue. That is going to continue. I know, I know that uh, some of the accounts they have given, let me, let me say three things. Number one, women are very reliable. When, when I ran into political turbulence as deputy president, more women stood by me than men in my team. And, and that is a fact. In the last election, for some reason, more women voted for me than men. <laughs> and therefore, supporting women is the easiest thing for me. Of course, apart from the fact that in my family I have more women family members than men. But I know sometimes I have, uh, when I, whenever I speak to the leaders in my corner, sometimes I, 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 in the process of mentorship, you have to tell them some really not, some hard facts. I remember uh, Susan, uh, one time I called her and I told her, listen, Susan, I am listening to you and you are not persuasive. You know? I want you to rehearse your text. Don't leave home before you know what you're going to say in a political rally. You know? Even if it means you have to cram three things. 
say something about agriculture. I had to take her through lessons, this girl, because I really wanted her to succeed. And forgive me, Susan, I was hard sometimes on you. Another time I called her and I told her, I don't want to see you in Nairobi. <laughs> you must go and sit at the village. You know, those things of rubbers. I told her she must put on rubbers. And sometimes I know women, they want to look beautiful. They want to put on a, a skirt that is... So these ones, I told them, look, this is not the time to look beautiful. You know, put on a long dress because this place is chaotic. You know, put on a long dress, put on whatever those things they say, I don't want to say. <clears throat> and it was all because we wanted to succeed, right? Um, I must also say that they, women have also changed my perspective. Let me give you two examples. Um, Anwai Guru, when we had, you know, we had a time in our politics, in the side of the politics we were, and it was time to make very difficult decisions, whether to go this way or, rem or to remain that way. And among the people who made decisions that, you know, confirmed to me that women are brave, is the decision why Guru made to join our team. When she joined our team, I could not believe it because everybody believed she would be on the other side. And it, it took a lot of courage, you know. Same thing with uh, my dear sister, Ses Mbarire. It was obvious to everybody that she would be on the other side. But when she made the decision to say, this is where I'm standing because this is where I believe the people are, she stood out as a great leader. So all these great ladies are, are, are the epitome, as has been said here, of great leadership. And we want to work with you and we will do the best that we can to make sure that women leadership succeeds so that we can use it to rally the rest of our population to appreciate that for Kenya to make steps into the future, we cannot do it with half our population that are men. We must do it together with everybody on board. That's why the bottom-up economic transformation agenda identifies working conditions, including unpaid care work, exclusion from decision-making, risk of gender-based violence, low access to adequate health care, vulnerability to the effects of pollution, environmental degradation and climate change, as well as early marriages and childhood pregnancies as contributing factors to minimal participation of women in key sectors of our economy. Yesterday, as I supported a First Lady, I, I took time to see the plan that uh, her office has. And one of the agendas that uh, I agreed with her to concentrate on is the agenda of children. Because we have a very serious problem around children in Kenya. And there is some sad statistics out there. And I am happy that I'm speaking to women leaders. The subject of early pregnancies, statistics show that Kenya in the world is the second highest in the world where early pregnancies happen. This is our country in the world. Again, all the subjects around early marriages going into FGM. So, I am asking women leaders, as I do men leaders, to work in concert, all of us, to protect our children, especially from FGM, 
early marriages and early pregnancies because it is destroying the future of many of our children. So as I, as I went through with the staff of the First Lady what, what it is that they want to do and how government can support to raise the bar, to uh, raise the profile of the challenge that we have in that space, I thought about these uh, women leaders who are here. Please take it upon yourselves as you do the many things to also work with us in making sure that we protect our children, especially our girls. I know we have set targets for ourselves, especially on the subject of SGM. I want to tell men to stand, to come forward and protect our women from FGM, even if it is for selfish reasons. You know, FGM destroys women and makes them less confident, less effective, and, and, and creates many challenges around it. Men should know, in fact, men should be champions against FGM. Because you know what it is. FGM destroys everything that would be good in a woman. So, if, and I am saying this to the men here, you know, because even if it is for selfish reasons, because we are the ones who enjoy when, when, uh, huh? I mean, so, um, and especially uh, the women who come from the counties that have uh, prevalence of this uh, challenge, please, let's go out of our way. And therefore, we made a commitment to the people of Kenya to accelerate interventions to actualize the constitutional gender inclusion threshold and pursue radical imaginative strategies towards this end and to significantly enhance financial inclusion of women among other efforts. And let me say this, when I did uh, a memorandum to parliament, I did not do it for political correctness. It is because I had made a commitment to the women in Kenya Kwanzaa that we would finally do something about this two-third gender rule. And it has been a back and forth for now over 10 years. I want to commit to the women of Kenya that this time round, this time round, we will make sure that the two-third gender rule is a thing. And the exercise that is going on in Parliament, the NADCO report, now includes what Aisha Juma and her team have been doing. And the commitment I made is that for the 290 seats, at the very minimum, we must have at least one third being women. Now, I know there is a lot of calculus and mathematics and interpretations and what, but in the bill that is going to go to Parliament, we will make sure that at least more women, and hopefully we can do this by next year, more women get to leadership in Parliament. And my instructions are very clear to Kimani Ishungwa, who is the leader of majority in the National Assembly, and the PG of uh, our Kenya Kwanzaa uh, team, that that will be the official position of the party. Yes. 
And we have talked to many leaders, especially men. And I can tell you, ladies, for the first time, I see that men are committed to making sure that this time round, we succeed in actualizing the two-third gender rule in the frame that we have set. And I, and I want to ask uh, women leaders, I know you may want higher numbers, but we can, we can, we can do it, you know, we, we can do it progressively. Let, let us get what we, what, we, what we think is attainable now. You guys know what you need to do. We can then take it to the next level, and then take it to the next level, and finally get it to 50-50. Yeah. Let me also say the following. Um, Cecil Mbarire is the chair of UDA, not by default. It is deliberate and it is intentional. And one of the assignments she has is that we must, as a party, lead from the front and we must make it in the rules, uh, Madam, and, uh, Madam uh, Cecily Mbarire, that when Rigiji and myself took it up on Bele, na tume pangana, tume kubaliana vile itaenda, we must also agree that going forward, if a man is a candidate for president in our party, the woman must be the runner. And, and if a woman is a candidate, then the, the man, a man can be a running man. Okay? And we must also cascade it down to the governors. So, and we must be intentional and deliberate about it, otherwise it will never happen. And I know fellow party leaders in other parties will agree with us, because we all agree, because I'm sure the party leader in Waipa supported Wavinia, the party leader in uh, ODM supported uh, Gladys, and all the other party leaders supported um, supported uh, their, their women uh, candidates. So we will do this not because we want to do anything against men, but we want to balance so that we all uh, move uh, together. And Madam says, you, as you undertake that exercise, you will have my 100% support. And uh, I know Governor Sakaja and uh, my good friend Kemani Ishungwa will also be supportive of that, <laughs> of that exercise. Much progress has been made, especially with regard to financial inclusion, with women remaining consistent in the uptake of various financial inclusion uh, facilities and affirmative action funds. Out of the 21 million Kenyans who have borrowed from the Hustler Fund today, 10.1 million are women constituting 48% of the fund's beneficiaries. Out of this, 8.8 .8 million women have borrowed a total of 23 billion of the total of 47 billion uh, uh, already lent. And let me say that the average age of women accessing the Hustler Fund is 35, compared to 39 for men. So more women, more younger women are more conscious you know, about how, how they, how, how, uh, what they need to do. And therefore, the mentorship that has been going on. And let me say something very deliberate here. Chari Tingilu uh, occupies a, a, a very special place in our country. She is the first woman to dare to run for president, you know, materially. And she's been a great inspiration. I must say this. I, charity is many times uh, very hard on me. But I, I must say this about her. <laughs> that she is a great inspiration to many women. Not, not in her party, to many women across Kenya. Yes. You know? Her daring spirit, 
has inspired many of these women who are today um, uh, uh, leaders in Kenya. I want to ask those of you who are leaders today, please, the mentorship that charity uh, gave you, please mentor others by demonstrating great leadership going into the future. And we are going to stand together to work with you. The last election proved to be a transformational watershed in women's participation in political leadership. As a result, the number of women in each category of elective leadership grew, with the greatest leap being in the number of counties which elected female governors. Kwale here, uh, Fatuma Chani, Machakos there, Wavinya Ndeti, Kirinyaga, Anu Waiguru, Embu, Sisili Mbarire, Meru, Kavira Mwangaza, Nakuru, Susan Kehika, and of course, Homa Bay, our Gladys wife. And I am very confident that the governor's seat, we should be able to attain the parity benchmark much more faster than in all the other seats. And therefore, I support because it is true. These women governors have demonstrated great leadership. In fact, better than the men. And if there is a place, it is, it is always said, and I'm sorry, Sakaja, it is always said, you're, you're a great leader in Nairobi, <laughs> I must say that. But let me say this. It is always said, what men can do, women can do better. Yeah. If there is a demonstration of that belief that what men can do, women can do better, it is in the governor's position occupied by this woman. They have demonstrated that certainly women leadership as governors have done much more than what their male counterparts have done. These leaders, they have stepped up as models of transformative leadership, advocates of women inclusion, and champions of leadership of devolution and good governance. I like what Wanga said, that they want to stand on the platform of integrity. They want it to be known that women leaders project believing and are profiled as women who are of good standing, incorruptible, uh, passionate, and, and that is what we all want to see in our men. These, same, these uh, leaders, they have resolved to leverage their unique and historic position as pioneers to pave the way for even greater numbers of women in key leadership roles by intentionally using their leadership to mobilize positive public attitudes to women leadership. In so doing, they have lived up to the ideals of bipartisanship and coordinated their endeavors in the best spirit of inclusivity to actualize the values and principles of devolution, gender equality, inclusive and transformative actions. It is through such inspired and principled actions that the spirit of our constitution is brought to life to catalyze national transformation. This is why I'm delighted to join you at the launch of the G7 strategy to expand women leadership in devolved units and amplify the transformative impact of inclusion on socioeconomic development, governance, representation, and institutional growth and development. I am persuaded that the G7 represents a superior proposition in promoting the inclusion of women generally and in leadership specifically. It, is all, it also provides an alternative pathway towards the sustainable realization of the two-third gender rule inclusion. The leadership of the G7 affirms our faith in the promise of the bottom-up economic transformation for shared prosperity through inclusion and have made an irrefutable and irresistible case for the urgent attainment of the gender parity as an idea whose time has come. I am very proud.
to associate myself with the G7 strategy for the Women Governors Caucus and pledge the government's full support for it. Let me repeat, I pledge the government's full support. Let us therefore stand shoulder to shoulder in solidarity and equality, face forward with confidence and lead this nation to a prosperous future where no one is left out and no one is left behind. The G7 um, strategy is a great one, especially coming in the backdrop of what we will be doing tomorrow um, in Embu. Um, and I will be Ali uh, says, I know you are our host. We will be there tomorrow morning to celebrate women in our country and leadership of women in our country. The G7 strategy, therefore, is officially launched. God bless you and God bless Kenya. Asante ni sana na mubarikiwe. Thank you. Thank you. A round of applause for His Excellency. And with your permission, Your Excellency, we have now the official launch that's going to be taking place. Allow me to now invite the G7, the seven governors to join His Excellency as we now officially launch the G7 strategy uh, beginning here. So allow me to count you down. Your Excellency will ask you to press the buzzer. I'll count down from five. The, the ladies can, yes, can stand there behind uh, P.S. Devolution as well, and C.S. Aisha Juma. So I'll count down from five so that we can press it down. Five, four, three, two, one. And we now have the strategy, G7 strategy officially launched. Excellency, the President of this great nation, Dr. William Samway Ruto. And as that is going on, Your Excellency, you'll receive the strategy document. All right, we can put up the pyros. Thank you. Your Excellency, with your permission, we'll also... If, if we can just clear so that, that, that we can have a picture taken as uh, the COG chair presents the strategy document. If we can kindly just uh, clear. Kindly, yes, thank you. We'll present to the seven governors. Then after that, Your Excellency, I'll seek your indulgence for three photographs that we shall take on stage. And once you receive your strategic document, I'll request that governors, we proceed to the stage. Please let's go on stage so that we can take a photo after this. Once you get your document, kindly governors, let's proceed on stage. Let's proceed on stage. Governors, once you've received your document. Thank you. Once you've received your document, we proceed on stage. All right, Your Excellency, 